Are you new to fishing coho and Puget Sound? Or maybe just looking for a few tips to catch more fish? In this three-part seminar series I gave at the 2022 Western Washington Sportsman Show, I'm going to share my inside knowledge that I use to get my clients into more fish. If you like our videos, make sure and give us a thumbs up. Or subscribe and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified when we have new videos come out. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. So let's get to the seminar. There's two types of releases that I use for coho. It depends on, one, how well the fish are biting, because it depends on what I might do with those downriggers. So the first one is a medium tension, a medium tension release. It's black, okay? But if you're ever in the store and you see they've got the red clips, right? Those are the offshore and they are very aggressive, right? Like I'm telling you, if you're gonna pull off the clip on this one, you better reel down and give it everything it's got and try and stop a truck going down I-5, okay? Because you need to put the hammer down on it to get them out of the clip. The black ones are no problem, but I use the red ones I use them when I'm Chinook fishing and I'm tracking the bottom because the downrigger is constantly tracking the bottom and going up and down. And I use them when we're doing cycling. Okay. So on my downriggers, if I'm marking fish, say 65 feet, 75 feet, 85 feet, 95 feet, these fish, these coho aren't all just really schooling up in one particular depth. Well, I'll set one downrigger. Okay, I want you to go from 75 to 65 every 30 seconds. I'll set this other downrigger. You go from 85 to 95 every 30 seconds. So every 30 seconds, I'm changing 10 feet on both downriggers. I'm now fishing a span between 65 feet and 95 feet. Fair enough? Think you're gonna catch more fish? Oh yeah, and they usually hit, it's two times when they hit. The moment it starts to move, or the moment it stops. I've never had them hit in the middle of the 10 foot jump. It's always when the bait first starts to move and when it stops. And what that tells me is those fish are following your bait and they're not hitting it sometimes. They're following that, oh, it's gonna get away. They grab it. Or maybe they follow it down and all of a sudden it stops and because of that sudden stop, they grab it. So cycling with Canon is a game changer, a game changer. And Canon is the only downrigger that has that feature. Again, I modify my clips to seven foot length. Do you need seven feet? No, but I would modify your clips so they're long enough that one, your downrigger ball can stay in the water, and two, you can work and clip in inside the boat without having to lean over. Whether you use a retro retrieve to pull that weight to you, or you use maybe, you know, like a little uh, uh, old, take an old fishing rod, put a bolt in it and bend it and epoxy it in the end and you reach out and pull it into you, right? I've got one of those in my boat too. But stay in the boat. Okay, let's get in to flashers, leaders, coochies, all that kind of stuff. Let me see where I am, good, okay. So on my leaders for flasher and spoon setup, here's a standard flasher spoon setup. I use 30 pound, okay? Pretty much 30 pound across the board. You can go 40, you can go 40 if you want. Do you need to? No, you don't need to. For my leader length, I'm somewhere between 30 and 40 inches. So, let me ask you a question. If you start out, say, and I'm just going to use a number that I hear a lot of guys talk about. You start out at 32 inches, flasher and spoon, right? You're fishing long and you get hit, but there's no connection. What do you do? Do you make a change or do you just write it off and go, yeah, hey, you know, he missed it. Who says let's make a change? Okay. We got five of you. That's good. What's the change going to be? What? Longer, longer leader, right? How much? 
a four inch change, I'll buy that. If you're going to make a change, make it enough that it's noticeable. If you're only changing it like two inches, you know, eh, make, make it a four, maybe even a five inch change. Make it a little longer because that fish tried to get it, but that action was too erratic for him to get into it. Okay. So let me ask you this. This isn't in the presentation. I'm giving this to you. Does everybody know about herring strips? Pennants? Okay, I'll get into that in a minute. You ever taken a pennant and cut it so it's just a really thin strip and put it on your spoon? Oh yeah. Makes a difference, doesn't it? Those fish will hit, they grab that, and they're on there. And I've had guys, I've had guys go, you're putting strips on spoons? Listen, that spoon isn't actioning because of the spoon. It's actioning because of that flasher. And that flasher's spinning that spoon and that herring strip on there. And they don't have to be big, just little small strips. So you don't go through a lot of bait. Okay. So, yeah, if you're not using herring strips, put scent on your spoons. It's gonna save you in the end. The one thing I'm really picky about is, it, let's say for instance, I'm running a herring aid and I've got anise on there. If I take, if, I, if I'm like, okay, anise isn't doing it today, let's go to bloody tuna. Bloody tuna. I'm gonna take that spoon off, it goes in a bowl, I'll wash it later and put a clean spoon on there. I don't mix my scents. I'm pretty anal about that. I don't want mixed scents on my spoons, okay? Doesn't mean I wouldn't run anise on one side of the boat and bloody tuna on the other side of the boat. Absolutely would, but they're providing two separate scent trails, okay? So definitely throw some scent on there. Have you ever done this? Just put the spoon out there by itself. Forget the flasher. Sometimes that smaller presentation is a game changer. So I, I can't even make this up. I've got another charter captain. He calls me up and he says, so I'm just wondering, have you changed your humpy gear out yet? I said, no. And he goes, okay, I thought I was crazy. I said, you haven't changed yours either. And he goes, no. I said, it's because we're catching a crap ton of fish. We're catching a crap ton of coho, ocean run coho, right? White flasher, 20 inch leader on a two inch pinkucci. It's the presentation. So you gotta ask yourself, well, why, why are they hitting this, number one? Because normally you're like, okay, the humpy run's done, let's switch over to coho gear, right? No, they're hammering it. Why? It's probably similar to the bait that they're feeding on out in the ocean. And they're still hitting in on that, keying in. I literally, ran white flashers and two inch hoochies into October and we were putting coho in the boat. So I say this to you, if you're in a rut, get out, try something different. Okay. Try a smaller presentation. A spoon by itself without a flasher can be pretty effective. Is it something I'm going to start with? No. People always ask me, Doug, what's the best color? I don't know. Buy the basics, right? I'm always gonna have herring aid, a cop car, cookies and cream. You know, I'm, I'm gonna have those colors, but I've got some off the wall colors too. And sometimes you, you just, you've gotta, you've just gotta reach out to your network and build that network. Say, hey, what did you use yesterday, right? If you fish area 10, area nine, call me up. I'll tell you exactly. What, uh, this is what I'm using today, this is what we used yesterday, I'll, I'll give you answers. I don't mind phone calls. If I'm in the middle of netting fish, I'm not gonna answer, but I'll call you back, right? There's no one color that I can say, you get this color, you're always gonna catch fish. It just doesn't happen. Your boat is your tackle box. So be prepared to fill the tackle box. Okay, flashers and squids. Heavy leaders here, nothing less than 30 pounds. Uh, you know, if you're gonna fish a 40 pound leader, here, here's where you can do it. Um, again, 
Do you use fluorocarbon? Fluorocarbon is going to be more stiff. It's going to give you um, less action. I don't think you need that with, with squid. And besides that, it's a pain in the butt to tie those hooks. It really is. Fluorocarbon's tough on your hands. But if you want to use it, knock yourself out. So on leaders, so the length from the nose of the squid to the flasher, and I always like to point, this is the nose of the squid, because some guys are like, I've, I've had, I, I'm like, hey, how long are your leaders? And he goes, 32 inches. And I'm like, okay. So I tried that one day, and I called this guy back. I'm like, hey, man, where are you measuring that? He's like, oh, from the back of the hooks. I'm like, oh, brother. So from the nose of the squid to where it ties into the flasher, 28 to 37 inches. Although, I might not remind you of what just happened this year. Coho gear, 11 inch flashers, 20 inch leaders with two inch ho hoochies and we're catching coho. And honestly, we wouldn't have known had we not got an early push of coho and they were hitting the humpy gear. Otherwise, if all of a sudden the humpies just kind of fell off, we probably would have switched out and gone straight to coho gear, right? So don't be afraid to mess around with your leader lengths with your hoochies. Okay, so I showed you I buy two sizes of hooks. I use the four-aught hook in the front and the three-aught hook in the back. That's my trailing hook. When I tie my hooks, I like my trailing hook to be about two inches behind that squid. About and I say the eye of that hook about two inches behind that squid. So if they do hit short, they're getting hooked, okay? Nine times out of 10, both hooks are in the mouth. Okay, here's your basics, okay? You've got your dark green spatter back, right? You've got your purple haze, your glow with chartreuse stripe, your apple core, and of course your light green spatter back. That is a good foundation to start, okay? Again, your boat is your tackle box. And I'm not saying necessarily, hey, go buy 10 of this. Although in this day and age, it's kind of hard to find stuff, right? Right, sold out of everything. So if you find something, you might as well just buy it, right? <laughs> just, just buy it and try it one day. Um, these are great colors. They're, they're always good foundational colors. Okay, and your ace high flies. I love ace high flies, they're great. I still use herring strips on these guys, okay? But let's start off with our blue spatter back, our glow, and this is from left to right, your purple haze, and your green spatter back. Ace high flies, they work great. I get a lot of questions, hey Doug, do you put inserts in your squid? Yeah, I do. All the time? Sometimes. If, if maybe I get a drive-by and nothing hooks up, and I'm like, eh, I might adjust my leader length a little, or I may throw an insert in there. I may have a bunch of hoochies already tied up with no inserts, and then I have hoochies that have them, same colors, just with or without inserts, and then I'll do a switch. And, and again, you rig them the same as you do your squid, right? Double hook setup. If you want to have your hooks, if you don't want that trailing hook to be that far back, you don't have to tie it like that. That's just what I do, okay? Herring strips, always. So, it's all about scent. So what I do, you guys, is I layer this in rock salt, okay? Go to my YouTube channel, pull up the video, I show you complete step-by-step -step how to do this. Um, I can put my herring, I have two containers, and I constantly have herring in them. And I, it, it'll last you two months. So it's not like it's gonna go bad. If it's just in flat out rock salt, you're good to go. Good to go. Three months. Oh, <laughs> that's a no joke. If the dogfish are in, don't put the herring strips on. Or they will annihilate it, right? It's Sad to say, it's true. And again, at my YouTube channel, I've got a full thing on the herring strips.